Thank God it's Friday. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I never do this alone. I have the ladies of your view. Hello. Excellent. We have a full morning. house today. Yeah. Yeah. Anima Brisdin. What happened? Traffic? <laughs> Pilot. <laughs> this map is so unreliable. Check Google map. Okay. Telling you. Ah, so he said, oh, okay. Papa was good. And I got inside. I just saw the trucks everywhere, all the way to. So Did alternative route. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe he was talking to you. Now the Nigerian voice, you know I cannot yeah, hear foreign. <laughs> that one that will be calling road like, I want to How are you doing, Nubia Julio? I'm doing amazing and grateful. Just Good um, chilling. Yeah. I'm going to be resting tomorrow because I have a hangout on Sunday. And I've been okay. trying to convince my husband <laughs> to, to allow me <laughs> to go for this hangout. It's and just it's a hangout. Mm -hmm. It's just in Ikeja. It's not far. And he's trying to say, <laughs> this weekend that we have to ah. ourselves. So I hope I convince him so that wow. I can just I hang out with friends. Cool. Family is everything. Hi, there, Maria. Well, I'm doing good. So yesterday I was just talking about coronavirus in my home and I was telling them what we needed to do. And everybody was, you know, turning up their noses at me. And this morning, <laughs> coronavirus <laughs> in Nigeria. And wow. now my husband is on board. He was like, okay, and so the masks. And he was I'm like, when I was talking about it, mm. anyway. Um, I'm happy my son's school sort of have been doing something because, yeah. you know, they live in a Chinese community. I mean, mm. the school is situated there. My daughter had given her, her what do you call it, the sanitizer, <laughs> and her whole class uses it anyway. So I had to have like a conversation with my domestic staff today on how yeah. washing of hands, using the sanitizer. And, I had a, I had a meeting know. also with my entire family, mm -hmm. the driver, everybody, we had yeah. a meeting. Mm -hmm. This is this is, this is the situation. Yeah. <laughs> everybody, I said it in Yoruba, I said it in fact, all the Yoruba all the languages. <laughs> Even the security guards, yeah. I had to preach my pidgin English, hey, bros. If they had disease where they are outside, everybody yes. they die. Yeah. Hmm. So. And they've all heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, how are you doing, Tokwen? I'm good. So I'm going to Ibado immediately after the show. Like, I'm leaving here and then just going uh, all the way to Ibado. I have two micro shading customers. I was like, you're just stressing yourself. How much are they paying you? I say, my darling, if I sit down in Lagos, I'm not any money. Let me go to Ibado and mm. collect the cash. Because yeah. sometimes we just feel like, oh, let's not stress ourselves. Mm -hmm. But then a little stress, more money mm. to do work. Yeah, so you're I'm going to Ibado. This is the time mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. Cool, that's nice. So and I someone called me, Mariah, that you, when you mentioned the micro shading, that you, the brows and all of that, someone called me that when Mariah mentioned it on the show, she got to my page and checked it works. So, please. this might also referred to someone that I met. <laughs> I, I think I think I think you do a fantastic do. job. I've seen all the jobs you've done online. Thank you. Yeah. Just just tell them again because I think, I, think. I think your words are okay. Let's go on a break. Uh, we have. Um, the Deputy Governor of Lagos State is uh, on the show today, so we're pretty excited about that. And we have a lot of questions, so we're going to breeze through the front pages of the news. But stay with us, we'll be right back. We're going to start very quickly with the nation. Power crisis, government launches forensic inquiry into discos. Coronavirus agency halts less hajj. <coughs> Coronavirus again, case in Lagos as Italian test positive. EFCC Saraki diverted Quara's 10 billion naira and caught OK Zambodi's poop over 820 buses. Um, so let's start with um, the coronavirus study. We'll just yes. very quickly. Because yeah, the case has been uh, reported confirmed. in Lagos, confirmed that um, an Italian who just came from Milan on a business trip was uh, tested for it. He fell ill the next day and was taken to the hospital. So he was tested and they confirmed that he has the coronavirus, uh, though it's in a mild form for him. He's being clinically tested and he's in the hospital in Yaba. They are taking care of him. So the Minister for Health is saying that um, we shouldn't panic, that they have been prepared to curtail mm. that. And he gave us how we can take care of ourselves using our hand uh, uh, sanitizers, Those things are washing. The infectious diseases hospital in Yaba was on top of their game when Ebola came in yeah. and they, you know that was when most of the people were quarantined so okay. well, I want to so believe that we have right? the best of doctors okay. on this. Mm. Okay so we're going to look the, um, they're going to do a forensic report on the power sector as we all know after the privatization we've been having the, the, the plan was that by now we should have a more stable power supply but that hasn't been the case so according to the report um, the recommendations by Nasser El Rufai committee um, that they are going to do a forensic report on all the discos 
detailing how the funds they've gotten, they've got, they got about 5.8 billion in the Mambila hydroelectric power project and what is supposed to supply, they're going to go into it. it. It shouldn't be a problem that we should be having power supply issue right now considering the money that's gone into it. So right. we are waiting to see the result of this forensic okay. report. All right, moving on very quickly now to the punch. Repentant terrorists to enjoy foreign education, say Senate bill. Okay. Uh, Jilted lover jumps into Lagos Lagoon and rescued. Ogun PDP suspends secret sec uh, secretary rubbishes Abuja peace meeting. Policeman's lover dies during suspected sex romp in Ikiti. <laughs> Court dismisses Ambody's beat to stop too. bus probe. <clears throat> Tears flow as Remo Star's player is buried. FG makes a U-turn, admits Boko Haram targeting Christians. House Araki diverted the Quara's 10 billionaire, says EFCC. Okay, let's start with the human interest stories. Um, the jilted lover that jumped in the lagoon was rescued. Who has that? Yeah, so this boy, <clears throat> David Principal, he's a 28-year-old man, and um, um, he stopped an Uber from I Igondo, and they got him on the third mainland bridge. And when he got there, he said to the driver, that he wanted to ease himself. The driver remembering a previous story mm. of someone telling an Uber driver he wanted to ease himself, jumped over, went, uh, stopped his car beside the rapid response unit. And just as he was about to tell them why he stopped, this um, David Prince will jumped over the bridge. But um, fortunately, he landed on these floating logs that you find, yeah. yes. Thank and he God was able to be, and he was rescued. When he was rescued in his wallet, was found 700 Naira and an ATM card. He says that he's, he was, he's just been jilted by his lover, and that's why he took that decision. He was arrested for trying mm -hmm. to so, take his life. No, but there is a case. Okay. It's no, about from that, we need to look at his state of mental health. Yeah. I mean, a regular well, person does not just okay, jump off the bridge. I found this major headline because actually really disturbing. Jilted. The repentant terrorists to enjoy foreign education according to the bill that is being proposed. And you beck and Ted Fonds supposed to fund this agency that's supposed to be constituted. Now, I don't know how acceptable this is, but I want, to I, I want to know this. I don't know the senator. So I want to know this. Gaidam, maybe what's his name? Yeah. So for me, it's Gaidam, like Brian we need Gaidam to do for, a psychoanalysis of the senator that is proposing this and then break down why he's proposing this. Then we can now advise him on the best way forward. Because when we rewarded when Niger Delta militants, we saw what happened. It hasn't solved the problem 100%. We, but still have we even issue. knew what they were All fighting I'm saying for. is that for, for those, the, vi for. the victims, for the victims, yeah. we they need to make sure that they are getting exactly what these people are Thank getting. Or more. So it's still a bit as fast fast reading. Hopefully we can get some criticism, uh, um, so proper um, debate on it before it's properly passed. Moving on now to Daily Sun, Boko Haram out to cause religious wars, his federal government. <laughs> CBM banks under fire over lending rate. 820 buses caught the Smiths and Bodies School to stop Lagos Assembly probe. Nigeria sliding into bankruptcy at PDP. So Lagos State has said that the courts in Lagos State have said that um, what I'm the former governor of Lagos State is actually being called for questioning, and that should not be um, an infringement yeah, on his rights. So yeah. they, they, are, they, they said that it's okay for the uh, House of Assembly to go ahead on the probe of the former governor of Lagos State. Yeah. So the no, major so headline, yes. so Boko Haram out to cause religious yes, war. Yes, the federal government uh, through the Minister of um, Information is saying that um, the Boko Haram insurgents and their ISWAP, ISWAP um, allies have changed their strategies. Initially, they were carrying out uh, these uh, menace on everybody. everybody. There were not, uh, there, there were no distinctions. So they go to public places like the markets, bomb the markets, the, um, the mm -hmm. motor parks mm -hmm. as well, because they wanted to affect everybody together. But now they are strategically affecting only Christian communities and churches. And so it's just a ploy for them to divide Nigerians that we should come together and fight the insurgents. The financial sector, I'm happy the Senate are, pro are, are looking into the issue going on there because we have a major problem. The lending rates is extremely high in Nigeria and we all know this. When you deposit your money, and this is what the Senate is beginning to probe about that, and at December 2019, when you deposit your money in your savings account, what you get is 3.8%, no matter how much the, the money is. Mm -hmm. But when you want to borrow money, you're getting in the minimum, the mm -hmm, official rate mm -hmm. is 15%, but unofficially, most commercial banks will give you at 20 something it's percent to up to 30%. Right. Yeah. So we can't have um, people with inflation rates can't save, they don't want to save their money. The yeah. ripple effect will be a whole lot. They also said they are going to legalize electronic <coughs> transactions. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, they want to create a law penalizing online fraud. This happens a lot. And so we need to have like a proper, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about okay, this. Okay, let's move on <coughs> to Vanguard very quickly. Uh, Nigeria at risk of coronavirus's neck. Let's find a story we've not taken. Gridlock reps move to probe alleged extortion at Lagos ports. Mm -hmm. 
El Rufai's power shifts to south, comments raise dust. And uh, let's find one more story. APC should be ready for eviction in Lagos, says Makinde. And the chairman of Lagos State had responded to him saying that it would take more than a stillborn unity to take Still Lagos. That's, re that's referring to PDP. Mm -hmm. Has been stillborn. All right, let's talk about the extortion. Yes, so the, the House court, of yeah. Reps is about to carry out a probe to um, investigate the alleged extortion of truck drivers who are trying to get into the terminal. It has been talking about every single yeah, day. Yeah, so they are collecting from 200 to 300,000 naira from these truck drivers. Mm. And sometimes they spend like a month or two before they are allowed access into the terminal, which mm. is causing more of the traffic gridlock that we have. Mm. So investigations are ongoing. They are saying that they've discovered somehow that the officials, which are supposed to be taking care of that, the last man, the police, are working hand in hand with the staff of the terminals to ex extort um, these uh, truck drivers. So hopefully they will be able to <coughs> find a solution to it. Okay, let's move on to the Nigerian Tribune. Let's find a story we've not taken. Why Boko Haram now targeting Christians? We talked about that already. UCH medical students idle as Midcan strike enters day two. Oshun governor pays nine-month salary arrears of workers. That's Ogun State, actually. Yeah, Ogun. Okay. Where's he getting the money from? Raymond Stars player Tiamu buried. El Rufai committee gets power to probe the schools. And court nullifies impeachment of ex Kogi deputy governor Achuba. Let's talk about the Oshun governor of the state. Okay. Yes, that's saying? Prince Dabo Abiodo. Yes. So, you know, before the former administration um, recruited about 1,000 people into the civil service, which they, they had a lot of irregularities concerning their recruitment. Mm. But uh, at the end of the day, the uh, governor of um, Ogun State has decided to assimilate them into the system and paid them mm. like nine months arrears, about 1,000 of them. So everybody's happy about it. We wish mm. him well. Thank yeah. him for, you know, right. not sending them away and making people lose <laughs> their Fantastic. Job. The final paper, Daily Trust, Nigeria, Saudi, Saudi Arabia, halt Umrah over coronavirus. Uh, White, uh, I think, let's find the story. So, Supreme Court will pay 60 million naira fine soon. Olani Pekun and Babalola. I think that's about it. So, Umrah has been halted and cancelled? Yes, so, and even the Hajj is at risk of being cancelled as well. The Saudi Arabia government has placed a ban on travelling within and outside um, Saudi <coughs> the present situation. So... Those of you who have paid no for trip. Hajj, God will help us that Corona is co defeated before the Hajj. Mm. But right now, those on Umrah can't even go. Wow. All right, so that's all we can take on front page review. I would say earlier, the Deputy Governor of Lagos State is here. We have quite a bit to discuss with him. And please send in your questions and calls so we can actually have a comprehensive discussion, conversation with him. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So with us, we have Dr. Kaderi Oba Femi Hamzat, also known as Femi Hamzat, is the Deputy Governor of Lagos State. He's been Ministry of Science and Technology before, I think August 2005 to 2011, and he's been the Commissioner of Works and Infrastructure, mm -hmm. and also he's been the Special Advisor on Works to the Honorable Minister of Works, uh, Power, Housing, and... Uh, he's been quite in the public sector for a while. The reason why I'm saying all this is so that you know he's well-rounded. Yes, mm -hmm. So we can, we can ask any question mm -hmm. we want to. You can join the conversation 070-806-68014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. Welcome, Mr. Deputy Governor. Thank you. You're welcome. Good to have you. Obviously, the elephant in the room is um, coronavirus. Uh, our greatest fear is upon us. Um, Nigerians uh, woke up this morning to the fact that it's been confirmed in Lagos State. And everybody, some people are in panic mode. As I speak to you, I've gotten messages from people saying, ask him this. Sir, what is your government doing? First of all, to ensure we can contain what we have and to prevent others from coming into our territory. So, you know, Nigeria is not isolated from the world. Certainly. So, we, you know, we, people come into our country every day to come and do various businesses. So this young man came in from Italy, in Milan, came in on the 25th. He has a consultancy job with a company in Ogun State. So he landed in, on the 26th, went to Abeokuta, well, Ewekoro. And then he, he fell ill. And I think the doctors were smart enough to say, well, this is somebody coming from Italy yeah. that just suddenly fell ill. And then so they took him. So we sent an ambulance there with the pep jackets. So they brought him in and then he was diagnosed. The good thing is that he was brought in yesterday morning. Within four hours, he's been diagnosed. So 
our diagnostic tools oh, seems to work mm -hmm. better than we expected. Wow. Normally it takes about eight hours, but within four hours we are able to determine that, okay, it's, so it's in our biosecurity lab in Yaba. It's a lab that we build that can accommodate 100 for okay. now. Okay. But it's only one bed that is occupied today. Right. Hopefully it won't spread, but so we are ready. Mm. We are well equipped, so it's there and it's getting better. The challenge is not for people to have the virus. If you don't know, that's the challenge. Mm. Mm. So in this case, it's, 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 it's known that he has it. It's going to be okay. It's, st it's steady. The doctor told us that it's going to be fine. Okay. It's, so what we are doing now is it came through one airline. So they're trying to track everybody on that flight. Okay. Okay. That's, so it went to, from Lagos to Iwekoro. Who has he met? Okay. What has happened? So those are the people that they are tracking. Christian. Isolate them and then check. So the, the virus is not totally fatal. You can actually survive it because Nigerians Absol who are clueless, they've been hearing coronavirus from far, mm. but now it's here. Death. So they're not. Con they want to know exactly: mm. is it fatal? Can somebody mm. actually recover from it? Well, yes. I mean, so there are very thousands of coronaviruses. So, like I was saying, bat, for example, has a lot of viruses and is in our community. So this COVID nineteen. Fortunately, the fatality rate is lower than 2.5%. Okay. Mm. For SARS, it was about 32%. Right. Mm. So for others, it's 25, whatever. So in this case, we are lucky. So for people that get the moment you, it's determined early, yeah. then it's fine. Okay. If it's late, then that's where the challenge is. Yeah, so I think that is important because a lot of people may be afraid that um, if you have it, we need to hide ourselves or, oh. and be stigmatized. But it's important that we know that if you get treatment quickly, quickly. you yes. will survive yeah, it. It's, uh, it. It's so what are the measures that Lagos has put in place to sense What are we doing? Like during the Ebola time, mm. if people were asked to wash their hands, we could see adverts running immediately. Mm. Sensitization, what exactly are... Well, I think that's also... In the, so we must also all listen to what our parents have been telling us. Our mothers have always been saying, go and wash your hand. <laughs> when you sneeze, sneeze into an handkerchief or mm. into your yeah, arm, no, exactly. No. So. That's just the basic things that we should just do so that if anybody calls beside you, just move away one minimum 1.2 meters. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's like this. Right. Just move away. Okay. So, so if you cough now, I'm going to move. <laughs> 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 All right, so, uh -huh. <laughs> so moving on to, because there are quite a bit of other issues we'd like to discuss with you. Wednesday, Lagos was on lockdown, totally. Um, in fact, there was reports that, oh, the deputy governor is taking one way. I'm like, yeah, right, so that, that, that doesn't sound like him. But the truth is, we keep having these tankers falling down. Mm. We keep having this gridlock in this Lagos state. Mm. It's, can we preempt some of these things and find a way to manage it better such that that morning, Lagosians would have been aware that this has happened though. Mm. Plan your morning somehow. We expect that, I mean, you're building a mega city. Some kind of information should have gone around to us, don't mm. you think? Well, so. So first of all, I didn't take one way. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I've never, you know, never, why would I take one way? For what? I was coming on third mainland, so I couldn't have right. taken it one way right. anyway. So I don't know where that came from. So we know that there are about 18 locations in Lagos. When there's a great lock there, the whole city will lock up. Exactly. We know that. Now, the challenge is this. As a people, I've lived in the United States for 14 years. Every time when there's going to be summer, you must change certain things in your vehicles. It's not... It, it, so these things are a process. If the process doesn't flow, there will be trouble. So part of the challenge is that we have vehicles, all these articulated vehicles that are 40, 50 years old. Hmm. The question is, should they be on the road? No. At the same time. So they, they, that's the question. Should they be on the road? Hmm. So remember, when VIO takes over a vehicle and check it. People say, oh, they are taking Huba. They are, it's not. So as a people, we must also be ready to say, this, let us follow a process to make life easier for all of us. Look, we talk about it's our society. I think we've, you are discussing one issue on this, uh, and I, I think I told you later about it. So we, the reality is we cannot say what is good for me and my family. Then I'm not in a society. It's what is good for the community. Mm. When you listen to, you go to Japan, for example, and Tokyo, on the rail, you see people talk on the phone. They will be talking very, very low because they don't want you to disturb you. Mm. The African mm. But here it's, oh, they, they, why? So, so it's, I think it's just a question. The example of, from the leadership is something that, you know, we cannot even applaud ordinarily. Now, because you've said, you know, it's a process, that's why I'll bring this question. We know the tankers are in Lagos because of capitalism. Starting from the Apapa 
all the way through Kirikiri, along the lagoon, all the way to almost Badagri now. You have tank farms springing up every day. Mm. And it seems like the government just wants to turn a deaf and blind, deaf air blind eye to the issues of the people living around who are clamoring that this cannot continue. Mm. Added to that are bonded terminals. So we are bringing articulated vehicles into Lagos, whether by choice or by choice. Mm. We want them because this is a capital city and capitalism is just thriving. Why is Lagos State reluctant to regulate at least? Because if you cannot stop, there must be sincere regulation of the activities of these people. Enforcement. Mm -hmm. And strong enforcement mm -hmm. of this. Thank you very much. You see, so, you know, we've all been talking about restructuring our country. Lagos State don't give permit if you want to build a stamp farm. DPR does. We've gone to court. We've gone to Supreme Court on this issue during Ashwaju and during BRF. The Supreme Court said no. That's the constitutional thing. So what are we supposed to do? Mm. So the reality is somebody can stay in Abuja and give a permit. Mm. And Lagos State has no control. There's nothing we can do. So one of the things we've done is, OK, in building this, your tank farm, in building this tank farm, these are the things you must do. So that, if, God forbid, if there's accident, you don't kill so thousands of people. So that's the issue of enforcement now. So, but that is Those on your side. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the trucks, remember, Atlas Cove came through Lagos. Yes. The reality is those in the Jegun, for example, the, all the tank farm the, represent about 60% of the fuel that the whole country uses. We agree. The so the challenge is you also don't want to kill the economy. So everybody say, oh, the <coughs> risk the being, is, is of doing business and the rest. So one of the things that we, we've had four meetings with NMPC, with the ownerships, everything. So like we said, it's also a process. Now that we've all agreed that these are the things we do, then we can move on. Because God, it's difficult to just jump in and distort. Could there the have been a moratorium on springing up further? Because we, what we had on ground, we couldn't deal with. Mm -hmm. And then, as we speak, yesterday, there was a launch of a new bonded terminal now for containers to decongest the papa. They are moving into Amuo Dolphin and all those areas. Residents are afraid because already we are suffering the, the, the effects of this. Could there have been a stop on you know, further development of this Depending when those infrastructure that you mentioned are put in place. Uh, so when you say bonded terminal, for what? So real, remember, we also have what we call the Balame Tinumbu terminal, but that's for trucks. Mm. Because the reality is, so one of the challenges we have is there is no call-up system mm -hmm. for the trucks. That's mm -hmm. why they're all over the place. Yes. Now, so many problems. Also, before, remember, we're a country where we import a lot, we don't export a lot. So all those guys on the road, they are carrying empty containers. Yes, yes. It's because they have a seven day period. If they don't return yes. it, they will be charged their marriage. Mm -hmm. So we are working with Shippers Council and the rest to say, okay, why don't we extend it to 21 days? So that at least because they're also business people. And before they don't ask them to bring it back. Now, because we concession the port, if you fly over the port, you see that they have a lot of space. But you, we've concessioned as a, as a people. We've concessioned it during, I think, 2012, 2013. We concessioned ports to private ants. And therefore, they have the right to do what they have to do. Mm. So it's commercial. So those guys are on the road because they want to return those containers. So those bonded ports are also important so that you can have those trucks going there and then you can call them. So we are working with Ogun State. There'll be one in Shagamu. There'll be one by Amuwa Dolphin. There'll be one by Lily, Lily Pond. And then so you, from Shagamu, they can call them. They come to this place and then to Lily Pond and then to, into the port. Okay. But remember, the, another problem. The port doesn't belong to Lagos State. Hmm. Hmm. So the, the reality is, of course, we have a good MD now that we are talking to. But if some MDs can say, well, go to hell. And there's nothing we can do. All right, do. I have to go on a quick break. And we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So we still have the Deputy Governor of Lagos today. Yes, Toko, you had a question. Yes, yeah, so um, there are undeniable lots of work going on in Lagos. You know, a lot of activity that makes it look like there's a lot of work going on. But... I have passed through, and I would take one road specifically, and there are many that I can cite as examples. Be, if you're going from Ojota in Wadi Korodu, that stretch between Ojota and Mile 12, 
has been fixed in the last one year three times. Now we have Julius Bega excavating the entire floor again, doing the same thing. <coughs> we, we can't claim, you, you've, been, you, you've been around works enough to know mm -hmm. that there are people that fix roads and contracts are awarded commercially to reward favors <coughs> to political allies, as opposed to giving it to people that can deliver. So we mm. spend money that we don't have doing the same road every three, three months. Over and over. Mm. And we're not giving to those beggars. Mm. When are we going to stop this tide of settling people with contracts? And when is Lagos going to really get serious about getting roads fixed? Mm. Oh. So, <laughs> so your question presupposes that <laughs> we are inherently <laughs> bad. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> so which is okay, which is okay. But the truth is this. So there's a difference between rehabilitation and palliatives. Mm. So sometimes, because the resources are not enough, you go and say, let's go give people relief, even if it's three months. Mm. So probably what they are doing at that time is let's do some palliatives. So what that means is this. So a road, a road has different layers. So it has the sub cost, which might be sand or whatever it is, and then it has a, a, a bider cost and a wearing cost. So by that name, a wearing cost is the one you drive on. Mm. That wearing cost, it will wear away. Mm. Because the, you know, it's bitumen, it will wear away. So normally what you do is you remove that binder cost. Mm. But if all the things be done, if they are bad, so what you just do as palliative is, okay, let's just do that. We know it will wear off mm. with time. So sometimes you just go in there to say, let's just do palliative, give people relief for six months, whatever, what? until you have enough resources so to okay, actually do it. In addition to what she just asked, why doing the palliatives? If you can, you know, save up the money, if it's funds that's the problem, and do a major road, so we don't have this issue of you have to keep redoing the roads. And secondly, who is in charge of quality control? Because it's very possible that the materials, even for the palliatives, are not what is obtainable outside the country, which makes our road wear out over and mm. over. That's one question. Okay. The second one, small to it. Let's even let's, let's okay. okay. right. <laughs> yeah. So, because it's an important Quality. question. So, Lagos State, for example, we have our own asphalt plants. Okay. So, we have three of them. We have in Ojodu here, we have in Badagri, and we have in Emota. Okay. So, we produce and we have a lab where we also test our materials. Yeah, okay. So, the challenge is not that the quality. The challenge is the tonnage. On our, so you cannot over-design a road. Mm -hmm. Because when you over-design a road, you spend a lot of money. But like I said, it's a wearing cost. Technically, it must wear off. You have water. It's a chemical. So water and bitumen don't like each other like that. But it will happen. So ultimately, it will dissolve and move away. So what happens is you try to do palliatives at a stage so that you can so there are major roads in Lagos, about 26 of them, that we must continue just make sure that they move. Mm -hmm. So that's one of them, mm -hmm. Funshaw Williams and the rest. Mm -hmm. So the reality is, even when there are no resources, you want to make sure that you make them more trouble as much as possible mm -hmm. every time. Now, the challenge is this. To actually remove and maintain them is expensive. Mm -hmm. So what, what you will notice that the BRT lane are actually concrete. The other one is not concrete. So what we are doing now is everything concrete. But that increases the cost by 40%. Mm. It's the same pot. Yeah. So that 40% reduces <coughs> our ability to go somewhere else. Right. Because it's the same pot. But we said, okay, let's go and, let's go and buy the bullet and just do it. On, yeah. But the reality is it will break again. Maybe five years, maybe six years. Somebody will have to come back okay. and do it. All right. Again. Maram, okay. So there's this particular topic that Nigerian, um, Lagosians have discussed over like last month over and over again. And this is like almost the human face for government policies, especially uh, regards to the banning of the bikes and kekes in Lagos State. So people understand that, you know, this one of your major themes, project themes, is traffic management. So we understand that if that's what it was about. But also, the Gaussians seem to be suffering because of these policies. We have people who can get, we do not have enough buses to take people from one place to the other. So there are longer queues at the bus stations. We have people who may be unwell, who got a bit of relief from getting on bikes, who have to walk, pregnant women who walk long distance to get to where they're going. So we're asking, when government makes these policies, do they remember the human beings that will be affected by <laughs> this? <laughs> so I think what would be good, uh, and you know, it's something that maybe we should 
take a look at is maybe sometimes when we debate this thing, we should probably put it on TV. Hopefully, it won't change the character of the debaters. Mm. We debated this thing six times. We nearly fought each other. No, I'm serious. A lot of people were very emotional about it. But you must also look at the good of the people. So there is a book that I've read a long time ago. I was lucky with Governor Fashola to have met Lee Kuan Yew, the Prime Minister. Of Tough decisions make a, a nation better. Mm. Tough decisions. When they wanted to change, we brought the town planner, the man that plans Singapore, we brought him to Lagos. His name is Kai Lee. Kai Lee. Now, when we got to Badia, the man on helicopter, the man was just laughing. He said, what's for? He said this was Singapore in 67. 67. But it was tough. Mm. In fact, there is a book that you should read. I will get it. To, that say, there is a man that was holding his hand like this, trying. His grandchildren now say, how I see, I hope my grandfather can see what he was trying to stop. When the, the title was When the Bulldozer Came. So every nation, every development must make decisions. Now, are those decisions selfish? Are they in the interest of the people? Mm. I think that's what should happen, what, what should determine your, your decision. Okay, I have to go on a break, sir. I have to go on a break, sir. But I would like to quickly ask, uh, ask, ask a question connected to that. Mm. The buses that the former governor got into Lagos State mm. are somewhat tied up in the ports because of all this, this um, litigation. A lot of Lagosians really don't care. We want the buses on the road. Yeah. What are, can, can we, now that you've banned Okada, mm. can we have these buses out on the roads to at least get us to now alleviate? That the, now that the Okada are restricted, yes. not banned. Not banned, okay. But they are still, some so, areas, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are still can we get all the over this. Well, yeah, we are working on it. So what has happened is that we, the, there is a 21 billion, 21 billion duty on those buses. Wow. wow. 21 billion. Jesus. Ooh, so, <laughs> Well, so because, you know, when you, bring, uh, when you bring things into the port, you must pay. But fortunately for us, Mr. President has approved the waiver because it's a mm. commercial thing. Okay. Yes. It's not, it's to Thank carry you. people. Thank you, Mr. President. It's not business. Yes. So we'll get them out. Okay. okay. And Fantastic. then we'll start to, you we need know, to hear what Let's go to quick break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation <laughs> with the Deputy Governor. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Oh. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So, Nima had a question. Go ahead, sir. So, I must commend you, first of all, for what you've done on the Badagri Expressway. I'm aware that Lagos State is in charge of the Eric Mo Okukumaiko stretch of the road. But then, while this is happening, I see tax force come, break markets, you know, clear people along the, who are selling markets along the road. And I, I, I wonder, like Miriam was talking about, how much of a human face government has. Because every of these people selling on those sides of the roads are looking for what to feed on. Well, how about government looking into a rent-to-own kind of shopping complex where they will find a place for them, regulate their businesses, regulate environmental pollution, regulate every other activities of these market people and make them pay small, small because they are used to thrift anyway. Everybody there does a job. They are used to that. So how about that kind of arrangement? And I've seen it happen already in Delta states in Asaba. Well, so uh, you were specific about Lagos uh, Badagri. So Lagos just an example. Uh, as an example, so mm. I'll be specific on that. So Lagos Badagri, people have been paid compensation. We pay 3.8 billion, capital B, for people to move. The people have collected money. Now, I agree that in the past three years or so, government left the place, so people will come back. So the reality is that it's a land that has already been acquired, paid, you will notice that even on job barracks, we paid the military about 300 million to move their fence and all the properties. So the reality is, look, before that happened, there were four meetings with everybody. Well, we are coming back. With Do you know how much we paid people to clear that place, to clean it? People were already living in the median. Mm. Yeah. It's not acceptable. It's not. It's not acceptable. So the real and. <laughs> every day on that road, every day, there are various atrocities. Yes. Mm. So one of the reasons why task force actually moved there was to rescue a girl. The girl probably could have been killed. So a lot happened to her. But one of the reasons was to secure that particular girl. Mm. 
Let me take and in the process, of course, they move ahead and mm. so to take mm -hmm. over the... Let me take this call from Kebby. Good morning, are you there? Thanks for calling. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Good morning. Go ahead, please, Timmy. Go ahead. Yeah, my name is Timmy. I'm calling from Kano. Yes, I'm calling ahead. in respect of the, uh, the coronavirus. Yes. Uh, I really want to know what's going on about the, the, the Italian guy. Is he okay now? Because my fear, my fear right now is, you know, I live in the northern part of the country, and I know how the northerners behave in terms of uh, health-wise and, and the way they handle uh, issues on health. Um, because uh, my fear is, I, I want to really know how the government in Lagos is handling the situation. Okay, so the, go the deputy governor actually answered that question earlier. The Italian man is... <laughs> has been quarantined, and he's actually recuperating, I believe. Yeah, and, it's um, in the isolation, in the isolation ward, ward in yes. In Yaba, it's a dedicated place for people that have infectious diseases. Mm. In this case, the, the COVID-19. So it's a section that is totally isolated. Uh, everybody that works there will have the pep suit and uh, all the gamut. Mm. Lagos State has over 600 pep suit now. Others are coming in. So it, it's, it's fine as long as we know whoever has it and is, right. we are fine. Okay. Yeah, so um, I want to go to the issue of security because mm -hmm. of time. And um, we have two major problems. The fact that we are fighting criminals. If you go to places like Aja, Ikorodu, we have uh, cultism mm. thriving there. People are being beheaded over and over. Yeah. We have that. We have the criminals who are involved in kidnapping. She talked about her, uh, one of her family members who was kidnapped two weeks ago. We have that. At the same time, the people who are supposed to be protecting our lives and our properties, mm -hmm. we have a major issue with them. The SARS shooting down people, harassing people, arresting innocent citizens. What is the government doing in Lagos State to quell this menace and help the citizens? Well, I think one of the the first thing we did was to call the RRS commander and his team. Uh, the governor and myself, we, even before the ESCO came in, uh, one of the things we did was to go and meet them at their, at their location in Alausa. Okay. So we all sat together and we discussed that. And I told them that, look, I'm an IT person. I go around with my laptops. So the fact that I have a laptop doesn't make me a thief <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. or anything like that. So you cannot, however, we also realized that we need to train these people. So they see a scourge, they see a problem, and they're approaching it the way they understand. Mm -hmm. So in a way, we also believe that as a government, it's our responsibility to train them so that they can also, let, let me tell you a story. Maybe I don't know if I have the time. I was working with a company called Morgan Stanley, and under me were, were 80 developers. My MD called and said, Kadri, we need to, you need to give me 71 names. We need to fire them. And I said, you must be out of your mind. Mm. Because, but the, his analysis was very simple. In Manhattan, the minimum that we pay somebody is about $80,000 a year. But because of the space, uh, health insurance and so on, it's about 200000 But he said, in India, I can get it for $15,000. So it's business. Okay, anyway, that happened. But at that time, I said, why can't I take it to Lagos? Why can't I? They said, well, probably you have issue with power. I said, yeah, there are power, power problem in India too. But the only reason we had the meeting was because at that time, that's when we have all this mail fraud. Mm -hmm. That's why we didn't bring that business to Lagos mm -hmm. at that time. At that time. I was right. talking maybe 2000. Yeah, 2000. Right. So the reality is there is this problem. Unfortunately, we need to train the police, and that's what we have right. done in Lagos. Let me but take those are in Lagos. Mm. So... I can't talk about well, SARS in other places. Let me take this call very quickly. I've been holding for a while. But the, sorry, ma'am. Yeah. But the challenge is that because we also don't control the SARS, so the IG yeah. tomorrow can move those people mm. to Bauchi State. So you train them and that's for that people here. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. that's the problem. When we did the insurance for our police, we did a, part of the agreement was, okay, they must stay here for at least four years. Because if you move them to, then that insurance is not valid anymore. So it's... Uh... <laughs> Let me take this call from Okba. He's been holding for a while. Are you there? Uh, this is Okwebi. I'm here. Go ahead, please. Okwebi from Ikorodu. Go ahead. Uh, greetings to everybody in the house. Yeah. Greetings mm -hmm. to you too. Yeah. My deputy governor, sir, please, Good morning. I want to bring an issue to your notice, sir. Uh -huh. There is a problem living on in the Ikorodu now. Look at the BRC at Ikorodu. Every morning, we have almost thousands of people lining up, queuing up there. 
just to board the BRC boat. I think the BRC boats are not enough at all at Kurudu. They are getting from the Kurudu and about, that is the Benson bus stop, then the Agri bus stop. Every morning, idiots every morning. A lot of fighting is going on there every morning when there is work. Right from 6 o'clock in the morning to that kind of 11 o'clock. There is a lot, massive thing there. That is one. The second, the, the, the second question is this. Please, sir, I want you to look at the suburb of Lagos. The suburb of Lagos. The interior part of Lagos. I mean, the developing area, the new site. The roads there are not just motorable at all. They are very, very bad. Maybe there is a palliative you do that you just enforce and make sure you empower the local government. Maybe they will be doing the grazing. Okay, I'll let you answer that question after this break. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Let's take you to Abuja, where the Minister of Health, Osage Ehaneri, is holding a press conference on the emergence of coronavirus. Okay, we're going to go back there. We just told that we just lost that contact, but we'll go back there in a moment. Let me come to the yeah. caller asked concerning the roads in Ikorodu. Yes. yes I just also wanted to add, add this as a tweet, which is, this is Isolo, and it sort of um, relates to the other yeah. question, which is, he says, Isolo SODA has no government presence at all. <laughs> the roads are terrible, drainages are clogged, and when they are evacuated, the debris is not removed from the sides of the road. And oh, this has been going on for years. Please, Isolo needs government attention. So. Okay, well, um, so presently we are doing, we are on 116 roads. So also you must scale these things properly so that you don't disrupt the whole operations. So for example, we held a meeting with Federal Ministry of Works and we need to maintain top mainland bridge. But we told them to hold on because if we are doing a jota and we now also do top mainland, we clog the whole of the state. Yeah. So it's about sequencing. So if I'm doing a road A that the drainage drops into road B, it would be stupid of me to go and do B first. B first yeah. I must do A. Mm -hmm. and make sure that when I finish A, I go to B. B. So those are the sequencing that happens, <laughs> apart from fund. So even if you have all the money, we can everywhere. do everywhere Sorry at the same time. Sorry to What is the role of the local government, in <laughs> solo, for instance, when it comes to clogging? Clear when, 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 when it says that, when it says that there is no presence, that it's an exaggeration. Mm, but the, the, I understand. It's because they are the, not working. The issue well, of clear drainage is being put by the side of the road has yes. been consistent across all across the, the Lagos states. Uh, you move so, it at the side and then it goes back yeah. inside. So we just. Uh, so part of what we've said. So w what they do is that they want the water to be drained out. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. That's the truth. It mm. doesn't work because majority of it will go back. So what we have said to everybody is, take it as wet mm -hmm. and just take it away. It's more expensive, but so what? But just take it away, the one you do. But that's the instruction that we're giving them now. So the people will see We have a call from Isolo, actually. Good morning, are you there? Thanks for calling. Uh, good morning, your view. Good morning. morning. Go ahead, please. Uh, Mr. God, uh, Dr. God, good morning. Good morning, sir. I, I want to advise that uh, we need to start looking at the sizes of some of our roads. Prices. Recently, I went prices. to somewhere around Mushi. And I was surprised that uh, there's a road in Mushi that from junction so it's right. That road is still very narrow. That's a road that was built for like 15 years ago. The same fine, thing yes. from Yanokolo all the way to Ipoti, the road is still narrow. And the way we have uh, our road built, it will not give us room for, especially when we have all these articulated vehicles or these, uh, all these water, uh, water trucks on the road. By the time you have them part of the road, the remaining part of the road is not enough again for other vehicles. Thank you. Because in addition to that, there's a gentleman, Danny Okechuku, that has sent me a message about a road, Ijedodo, saying that it's mm. not motorable. Ijedodo in Ikotun as well. That, that so, road, that's totally it's totally not motorable. What are you doing not, to help us? Uh, so Ijedodo, for example, it's been, it's been awarded. They will see. So the challenge is this. Ijedodo road is more expensive than 14 other roads. Okay. It's going to cost about $9 billion to build that road. Wow. Yes. That's the truth. Because it's waterlogged yes. and it leads to water. Mm. So you have to do 
Bridges. embankment and so so but it's been awarded okay. and they will see now the challenge is you know people say we should expand the road so church street for example will be building a demo in k2 will be expanded but something has to give it means people's friends will have to move mm. because the road is this before it's coming to this well something has to move. so i was really bothered so, about the road so before you can actually do that it mm. takes longer no but because there's you, must do you don't need to do that expand the, 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 you don't engineer. need to break fence somewhere <laughs> no because well, the be one so. of ogudu, this ogudu that Which ogudu to ogudu coming to um from third Bilan bridge to, Og to ogudu ogudu to that bridge the yeah. pedestrian the, the the bridge that brings you it, into yes, Ibadan Expressway. Yes, yes. That road is just, the, the construction work, I didn't understand it. We're spending money to build the embankment. I said, okay, but this road is narrow. Why are we building embankment on a road that is narrow? The thought would have been, we would expand the road and then now build the embankment. So we spend money building the embankment, then a year after you realize, you, oh, we need, to, need expand to expand this road. road. Then you break the embankment that was built, which is what we do. A How lot of times we break that? something and then we rebuild the again. Somebody will come and then... Uh, not, not that's, that's, that's not us. That's not us. So, <laughs> so but, but, but I don't know. The Ogudu one, I'm not particularly sure. Yeah. Uh, it's something I can tell take a look at but so the truth is we cannot expand all the roads mm. so you know Funds. yes that's the truth so it's not so again it depends on what so if you have a clover leaf mm. like you have in the moment you expand that mm. you will call gridlock if you don't expand the clover leaf itself to, to do a clover leaf there was not a committee again. Exactly. So, <laughs> it's, yeah. so do you have the fund? You must take everything at a time. time. Okay, let me so ask three people questions. Go ahead. Just one uh, question on infrastructure. So the, the rail, uh, the Barina uh, Badagi rail mm. is being constructed right now has defects. And I can say it for a fact, I've said it on It has show. defects. Yes, now, because of Engineer burning. <laughs> <laughs> what I can see, sir. <laughs> then what I can see. So at Orine, because of the activities of uh, traders again, okay. they've been burning under the bridge, and we saw a bit of crack. I mentioned it on the show, and I went back to check, and I saw that this has been ameliorated. Okay. Now, I wonder when she talked about quality control, how much of that mm. is being put into those um, you know, structures that are just springing up now, because you know the companies are foreign. Yeah. Mm. That's one. Number two, on the, along the lagoon, that since we have bonded terminals along the lagoon, can we do it such that the communities don't have to suffer so much so that they, the cargo comes in and goes again by water mm. so that we on the road, we can have road to drive? Yeah. Mm. Well, so there is increased uh, water transportation, mm. but is it enough? No. So if you go today, for example, to uh, mile two, you will see enormous amount of movement. Mm. So we have... Zero before, now there That's are three true. terminals there mm -hmm. that allow badges to move. So it's there, it's going, mm -hmm. but it's not enough. The you one, just need to increase the, it. Okay, I have, to, I, I, have, the, I have to move to health and education. I have, yeah. I have so much to ask on this. <laughs> so let me quickly do health very quickly. Yes. Mm. So um, I, I, based on personal information I've gotten from people working in the health sector, they, they've reported increase in government interference in um, an activity and improvement. But I, m my question, for you would be that when we build facility, which is mm. where Nigerians and uh, Nigerian governments tend to focus on mm. building infrastructure. infrastructure, we are not focusing as much attention human capital to the growth. human capital, to the people, to how they feel. Mm. And well interaction fair. with um, health workers mm. in Lagos State is overworked people. Yes. They are strained, they are stressed, mm. they are overworked, and they don't feel like the government cares about them. Mm. They have little interaction so with the government, and it's more like they'll bring, yeah, bring, the, bring the laptop now, okay, bring the new it? facility, and they are overworked. So what are you, what's your government doing? Or maybe you're able to pass this on to them on how to reach out to the human, the human capital, the he, people that are working, the nurses, yeah. the doctors. doctors yeah. So you will notice that when you go to various hospitals, so Lagos Hospital, for example, you see doctor's residence. Mm. So you, if you know other sets of people, staff, mm. as that. So the essence is, is it enough? No. But so, you will, so that they can live next to. And, you know, it's a flat three bedroom, whatever, in that part. And really, they, it's not that. So because they don't now have housing allowance because mm. they have that. So you see, look, the reality is this. Are we paying teachers enough? No. Are we paying civil servants enough? No. Are we paying even po political office holders enough? Yes. Yes. Leave it. No. Leave those ones. So no, no. Leave it, I can tell you my salary. Mm. What is it? Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Look. The pecks of office, Uncle. Will you tell me well, that? Well, I can. I can. So, listen. I remember very clearly when 
mayor, Giuliani became mayor of New York. New York. One of the things he said is, look, we are wasting our time if you pay people money that is not enough for them. And one of the things he did, well, fortunately he has the power to bring a commissioner of police. You understand, crime in New York City then was extremely high. I remember I have a friend, a medical doctor that was killed in his bedroom, in his bedroom, straight bullet, a medical doctor. He was my classmate in UI. So the reality is that, but what did he do? They increased what they pay people by about 70%. Mm. So, say, look, so, if not, so the reality, unfortunately for us, is that we have not grown our economy enough. Mm. So, so to isolate mean? some people is difficult. Mm. You understand? So no, no, but that's why, mm. no, no. <laughs> right, I, I that's why to... you have specific mm. grades for different cadre. Mm. So you have different grades for doctors. So when the doctor comes out, they don't go to level eight, they come at level 12. Mm. It's because it's to encourage and make sure that because you spend time in the hospital, your job is different and so on and so forth. I'd like you to touch on education because look, I mean, those are the two major health and education. Mm -hmm. What is your government doing to improve education across Lagos State, both from primary level all the way to tertiary? Mm -hmm. So, sorry, before I answer that. Okay. So, and hospitals are the only institution in Lagos State mm -hmm. that when they make money, we don't ask them to pay into any government post, mm -hmm. retain it. Use it as you feel. Mm. Of course, we can audit it later. Mm -hmm. They are the ah, only institution. Mm. Mm. Every other body, you must take you it to government mm. account. Mm. So the essence is to say, because you can have emergency, you have needs and so on, you can buy, you go like and that. use it. Mm. But we can audit six months later, whatever. Right. So now, in terms of education, I think the question that she asked, we've always asked the question, we spend a lot of money buying books, buying this. What have we done for the teachers? Yes. Yes. Because the, the teachers will stay longer mm -hmm. in yeah, school. So yeah. we all go there, primary six, you know, we yeah, spend six years, we move on, mm -hmm. and so on. So one of the things that we've done is we are training the teachers. If you recall, we held the school longer during the holiday yes. just to train the teachers yes. more. Mm -hmm. So every teacher in the primary school now, we have, we have a, a, a tool, device, yeah. a mm -hmm. device that allows us. The biggest problem we have in school is truancy. Mm. even with teachers. Mm. So, ah. but that georeferences you to say, okay, I'm in school. Where you are. And then you <laughs> they spend all the time preparing teachers' notes and all those things. It's already in the system. Mm. So that you don't really need to spend so much time doing that. So the, we've trained them. They, I'm, I'm sure that they're happy. The ones I've spoken to are extremely happy because you, you now give them tools to do the job better. Yeah. And, you know, so... We have to go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll have to wrap up this conversation. Hopefully, we can touch other quick, important areas. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Your view. Okay, so we're running out of time. Let's take a few tweets from our yes. viewers. Go ahead, so, please. So, Ebe Emmanuel says, Your Excellency... Oh, one second, please. I know that the governor is actually having a press briefing right now as we speak. Yes, so could just take a moment to you know, hear what he's saying. In, in our local dialect so that we can assure, you know, the fears of our people. Um, um, it's because we also don't want people to panic. That's why we're giving all the information as at where we have it. You know, um, I did not wait till this morning before we pushed out this information within hours where it was confirmed that the patient is positive, um, just so that we report correctly. Right. When he got into our facility yesterday morning, they needed to take the relevant blood sample and send to the lab. This is a molecular test in which they will do a series of tests and culture the thing for them to be convinced that it is real positive. And it's only when that has confirmed and that has happened that the Honorable Commissioner was informed and immediately we trigger all of the change of command and the information had to also get to Abuja. Um, um, ASAP because it's a national issue, so it's not something that we can um, just keep to ourselves alone. It was raised and it was escalated to Abuja, and it's only when um, Abuja has given the go-ahead that we make those those uh, information um, late, early this morning that we said um, we would we we'll give them the information whilst all of you are sleeping. And this morning we said we should also still call a formal press conference to repeat the incident that has happened in the last. 10 hours or so, and we can assure you that we will continue to provide information, you know, as it's been required going forward. Welcome back. So that, the, the issue is still ongoing, and we're happy that the governor is actually giving a press briefing on this. We'll keep Nigerians 
and they know of what's going on and any developments on coronavirus. But we have to wrap up on this. Let's really take a few tips for, for our bit, guests and we'll go. He's saying that thank you um, for all they've done in the Korodu area. But he says, as a youth, my greatest worry is security. The zone state above, Itamaga Ijede, has become a major zone to thieves, armed robbers, and kidnappers. So he's, he would like for government to so put So one of the an problem arm. of Itamaga mm. to Ijede is because the road is so bad, and therefore you can't move fast. Mm. So those boys come. Yes. But right now, there is a contractor there. That is one of the reasons why we went there first is because of security, mm. not because of anything. So, are there so like maybe 24-hour police presence? And so also, RRS has deployed a oh. platoon there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let everybody be careful. If you go and rob there, you will be arrested. And and if you you don't see what you see, Andrew in Stratham says, can you ask Dr. Hamzat what he's doing to stop an almighty fire explosion at those tank farms in those residential areas of Satellite Town? Any okay. plans? I, I think we, we discussed it earlier. Uh, so part of the so there is a protocol for all the plan. The first thing is there are walls, the thicknesses, the height, and all those. So we just need to go back. The protocol has been designed, uh, it's been shared with everybody. Mm. We've held meetings with so we will, just to make sure now that we have people there that actually make sure that those protocols are followed. So I asked yes. you during yes. the break. I asked you during the break that are you accessible to people on Twitter? And you said you read your tweets, sir. Yeah, Please, can you tell them so that they can tweet at you when they have <laughs> any complaints? <laughs> well, I mean, they can send it, and you know, okay, fine. and they, they look. The the challenge I have is that our phone numbers are, and I have only one line and. We'll take your number. Even 4 a.m., people call me. We'll yeah. treat it. You'll be all right. Eddie Sado is asking <laughs> I'm okay. that the, when, when are you likely to complete the pedestrian bridge on the newly constructed Lagos Airport Road? It's been reported that people are being killed every day trying to cross. Well, so, as, so the, the contractors are back there. Uh, they've given us three months. So hopefully there will be no issues. One, one so the, there are three that they are trying to do at the same time. One last question, sir. Waste collection in Lagos. Loma. Mm. And waste mm. recycling. Mm. I'll keep talking like I have pictures. Mm. Uh, so of one of the <laughs> things that, the best thing to do <laughs> is that, you know, I will call the GM of last, uh, Loma. Loma. Let him come. I want to see him. Several times no, let him come. I want to come. meet him. No, no, let him come here. Yes. So yes. that you can yeah. ask him. Please ask him to come here. So, but what we are trying to do is... Recycling. Recycling is important. And then we are trying, we are looking for, because we also need landfills. Mm. Ah. There's one in Ekwe now. It's not, it's not, you know, it, it, we now have, so it's next to the airport mm. and it's, it's in front of Alara City. Ah. Alara City is a new city that we are trying to build. Mm. So wow. really, it, it's it not appropriate. Work. We will take it away from there. Wow. I have to wrap yeah. up, sir. Uh, oh, Amoteko yeah, is over with Southwest. Mm. This is your LNSC guys. Will they join Amoteko? Because I don't exactly, what, what, what's their the work, work exactly? Is it not duplication so, of efforts? I know, no, no. So neighborhood watch is what we call it in Lagos. Yes. So basically, that's what Amoteku is all about now for the whole of South. So would they now be, back, be, be drafted into yeah, yeah, Amoteku? Exactly. So you will initially see both of them okay. because basically the Amoteku yes, yes. concept is to make sure that the boundaries are well protected. Uh -huh. So what happens is that, remember when our student was, they were kidnapped some four or five years ago, mm. they were taken to Undo. Mm. So mm. we must talk to each other mm. so, so people can't go to the forest. Okay. But Moteku will be able to go to the forest. Gotcha. Yeah. So right. that's in, the essence. In side, Thank you very much. Also. The one hour and a half is hardly enough. You know, uh, we have to bring you back. They should be hidden. Hopefully you come back. I would like to they also meet your hidden. wife. Yeah. We'd like to meet your wife. She How come we don't see her? She's not really active. On this. She's very, she seems to be she, quiet. She's, she's active. Yeah, exactly. we don't really see her on social media. We uh, try to follow. Not by social media. Well, you know, just Thanks for the information. It's better to go and talk to the orphanages and the restaurants yeah. and social media. Yeah, we like to yes. have her on the show. Important. That's all we can take. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us on the yeah. show. We had, uh, I think you really so informed us on the few. So many questions. We couldn't get Some over them. Um, we'll oh. ask you the rest <laughs> when, <laughs> offline. Yeah. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you on Monday. Stay Thank safe. Thank you very much.